Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at the function y equals e to the x. So we can answer questions from exercise 14b. Now let's first imagine that uh, you have £100 in a bank account and imagine that your bank is, um, is, is doing very, very well for itself and it's offering 100% interest every year. That's, that's some excellent interest rates there. So we can see here that if you'd input the £100 into the bank account by the end of the year, you'll have £200 in your bank account. Well, it will have increased by 100%. But what if the bank manager comes to you and says, well, instead of actually giving you 100% interest just in one year, how about we split it up into two 50% payments, one made halfway through the year and one made at the end of the year? And you'd think, well, increase it by 50% and then 50% again, you'd have compound interest there. So you'd get £225. You'd think, what a great idea, Mr. Bank Manager. So let's go through and see what we'd get if we were to divide it up into smaller and smaller sections. So one payment would give us £200. Two payments, one way half through the year and one at the end of the year would give us 225 Four payments for each quarter would give us 244.14. So we're increasing here, but we can see the rate at which we're increasing by is decreasing. Eight here is going to be at £256. And as we keep on going, we can see that we're increasing, but we can sort of tell that we're not going to be increasing forever. We're probably going to stop at a certain point. So once you've paid a thousand times 0.1% interest, you're going to get 271.69. Let's try 10,000. So 10,000 equal um, percentage payments here. And we're starting to tend towards a value here. So for N payments, where we have uh, interest at each payment of 100 over N, and we times it by 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n, we're going to get 100 times this number e. Now e is a very similar number to pi, in that it's a decimal that keeps on going on and on forever and ever and ever, and there's no repetition or no cycle or no um, pattern in its decimal numbers. So it's effectively the A-level equivalent of pi. And it's 2.718281828459. And the way we calculate this is it's 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n as n gets very, very, very large. You can imagine here the power is going to get very, very large, but the fraction here is going to tend towards 0, and the number inside that fraction is going to tend towards 1. So it effectively becomes 1 to a very large number, but, but not quite, it tends towards this E number. Okay, so it's an irrational number, it's a non-transcendental number, um, so it also has this interesting property. Now, why are we looking at exponential functions and their graphs? Well, actually, the graph has an interesting quality as well, and it is that if we were to differentiate the, say, for example, x squared, we get 2x, and the graphs here the, the graphs of the original function and the gradient function look nothing alike. So here we're working out some gradients and um, drawing these graphs. Uh, x cubed, we get a graph that's sort of similar on the top half, but nothing similar on the bottom left. Um, so, so here we get some gradients. For 2 to the power of x, now you don't need to know this off by heart yet, but the derivative of 2 to the x is 2x ln 2. We'll see where this comes from later on. But this graph here is pretty similar to its gradient function here. So the red line is the, is the original function, and the derivative is this blue line here. So quite close to its uh, differential here. What about 3 to the x? Well, 3 to the x is, is much closer as well. This time the gradient function is on top of the original function here. So the gradient function is almost equal to the original function. So what we can see here is that um, the blue line here is underneath, but the blue line here is on top. So somewhere in between 2 and 3, there must be a red line that will have a blue line exactly overlapping it. So that's what this e number is, the number 2.718. Um, when it's to the power of x, 
is equal directly to itself. So it's, uh, it's when you differentiate e to the x, you get the answer of e to the x. And if you do it 100 times, you still get e to the x. So that makes e to the x a very interesting uh, graph and a very, has very interesting properties to mathematicians. Um, so e to the x, let's go through a few differentials now. So things that you'll have to know um, here, and it's just rules to remember. So here are a few rules to start with. If f of x equals e to the x, then f dash of x is equal to e to the x. So we get the same here. If the x is multiplied by any amount, then when we differentiate it, that amount comes to the front. So if it was, say, e to the 3x, it would be, the differential would be 3 e to the 3x. So you need to know that. Uh, you'll see the, why these two results and where they come from next year. However, these are just two results that you will have to remember this year. Okay, so let's have a little go at differentiating these graphs here first. So the, the interesting part of e to the x is its differential equal itself, so that's what we're going to focus on here. So we're going to have three questions and we'll see, um, we'll see how we differentiate these. So if we get y equals e to the 2x, then the rule here is that you take that 2 number, you multiply the 2 to the front, and you get e to the 2x afterwards. So don't bring the x down with it, just bring the 2 down, the number that's being multiplied by x. So it's 2e to the 2x is your answer there. For y equals e to the minus half x, you bring the minus half to the front, and then it's e to the minus half x. And for 3e to the 2x, you bring the 3 forward, and it will times by the, sorry, the 2 forward, and it would times by the 3 to make 6e to the 2x. Okay. Okay, let's have a little look at these graphs as well. So y equals e to the 2x. Can we sketch y equals 2e to the power of x? Um, well, here it'd just be a transformation, a stretching, a stretching up by a factor of 2. So it would double the intersection point and it would double each y coordinate on the graph. What about e to the x plus 2? Well, this type of graph transformation is an f of x plus 2 transformation. So remember back to the graph transformations chapter, you'll see that plus 2 on the end of a function will increase all of the y coordinates by a value of 2. So we're going to get e to the x plus 2. Every gap here is a value of 2. And what we'll also see is it will have an asymptote here at... Um, y equals 2. Okay. Next graph here, so it will be minus e to the x. Well, what type of graph transformation is that? That's a minus f of x type graph transformation. So from our previous chapter knowledge, this will be a reflection in the, um, in the x-axis. All of the outputs will be negated, and if they're ne negative already, then they'll be swapped over to positive. So it'll be reflected in the y in the x-axis here. So you've got to remember back to your graph transformations chapter to be able to answer these sorts of questions here. What about e to the 2x then? Well, f of 2x, um, that's a graph transformation that squishes it inwards by a factor of a half. So we're going to squish this graph inwards by a factor of 2. So it's, uh, it's more steeper, we're going to times our x by 2 before we do e to the power of it, which is going to give it a greater value. Okay. Uh, the next one here is e to the x plus 1. So what type of graph transformation is this? Well, this is an f of bracket x plus 1. And here we are inside the bracket, so it's opposite land, and it's a horizontal direction. So it's going to be moved left by 1 or moved by minus 1. Okay, so we're going to move it left by 1, so each of these gaps here is a value of 1, where we've moved it back by 1. Okay. Let's, uh, let's have a little look at this graph here. y equals 10e to the power of x. Now we've got two different types of graph transformations here. We've got the power, the times by 10, and the negative of the power here. So the first thing we'd do here is we would reflect it in the y-axis because it's a graph transformation that's like this. 
and then we'd stretch it up by a factor of 10 because we have 10 on the outside of the function here so that's a y-axis direction change so here we're going to have an intersection point at 0, 10 and it's going to be a decreasing graph rather than increasing graph okay a slightly more difficult question here now so it's 3 plus 4e to the 0.5x well what type of graph transformation is this let's sort out the x one first so it's e to the power of a half x so this is like a f of half x type graph transformation so it's going to be it's stretching in the horizontal direction out by a factor of two the opposite of a half um, so we'd stretch it out by two a factor of two first Let's now follow BOD mass, so we're now going to times up by a factor of 4, so it's going to be effectively 4f of x, so stretch it up by a factor of 4, and then move it up by the value 3, um, like that. So we're going to move it up to the coordinate 0, 7, and the graph's going to look like that. So when you get a tricky graph um, question like this, break it down into separate parts and even draw one graph followed by another, just doing one graph transformation at a time to see how the graph builds up. Right then, so have a go at these questions here then. Pause the video and see how you get on. Right, well done for pausing the video and having a go at this question here then. So let's have a little look at the first one. So e to the x is going to look something like this. But this type of graph transformation is an f of x plus 1. So that means move it left by 1. So I'm going to have to draw this a little bit. Moves left by 1. Maybe I'll draw in the original graph to make it look right. So now I'll write here y equals e to the x plus 1. Okay. Now the next graph here is 4e to the minus 2x. So here's a little bit more tricky. So the first thing we'll have to do here, let's draw the first stage up here and the final graph down here. So the first thing we do is stretch it, uh, in. so reflect it in the y-axis because it has to move horizontally in this reflection here. It's effectively an f of minus 2x. And the 2 here is going to stretch it, uh, it's going to squish it inwards by a factor of 2 so it's going to flip over and it's going to start to decline. Okay, and now we have to consider the stretch upwards by a factor of 4. So we have to draw it really squished out here so it looks a little bit like this. It's going to intersect at 4 here. Right, okay, let's have a go at question 6a then. So y equals um, e to the 6x. So therefore dy by dx is going to be 6e to the 6x and y equals 7e to the 2x. This is going to be 14e to the 2x. So the number that's in front of x just comes to the front and that's all you have to do with differentiating e's. So it's a different rule to differentiating normal functions or polynomials. Right, thanks very much for watching this video then. Uh, have a go at questions from exercise 14b to make sure you're well versed in this and, and you've practiced it lots and lots. It's a difficult topic. It actually used to be in the upper sixth content for the previous um, specification. So it is difficult. Persevere through the difficult questions and ask your teacher if you need any help. Thanks for watching.